Come on, load it up. Show people what it does. It works. This is the first time all three of us have been in one of these cars. I don't like it, really. Uh, maybe. I'm so glad I don't have to change gears right now. Not, I don't like not driving. <laughs> Guys, we're finally back doing videos. It's been much longer than we anticipated, but we've done a lot more things than we'd planned to. Yeah, we've been busy. We've been real busy. Too busy, in fact. In fact, instead of doing another release, should we just have a holiday for a couple of months? <laughs> <laughs> or in a couple of years. <laughs> I'm sick. Nah, so we've made quite a few changes to the kit. We are out in the PVS truck. It's working. In fact, this has been done for about a week uh, and we have had a few customers' cars. We were just standing in the workshop and we thought we should all go for a drive and actually start this video in this car because it is done. Nearly. Jamie hasn't finished the interior yet. He's got a new console coming, but the gearbox is done. We are currently just using his paddle shifters to drive the vehicle. Transmission works fine. And because he has a massive hole in this center console, you can actually hear his engine a lot. You can also hear sweet. the turbo go <laughs> oh. Yeah, we've been driving this car around for the last week, just doing a few tests and checking how things go, especially with the 40s on it. What do you think of it, Dan? Yeah, it's pretty good. I towed with it the other day just to check everything was sweet. And other than being really, really high off the ground, hard to get in and out of, it's actually a fairly civilized vehicle. I don't think I've ever driven a vehicle that gets as many looks. I'm sure there's lots of photographs and video of it driving around in the last week. One day you could get a cool car, Andrew. That'd be all right one day. We'll see, we'll see. <laughs> it's doing what it's supposed to do. Have you driven it in sports mode? No. I don't change out of nice automatic because it's such a welcome change from having to change the gears yourself. Uh, I guess we can try it. Wait, is there a normal mode? Does my S15 have that? So we're now in sports manual mode. Daniel's shifting with the paddles. Dark in I feel like I'm so high up in here. I can see over the top of the seat and Daniel's head. <laughs> if I grab your shoulders, I could probably steer. Go on, load it up. Show people what it does. This thing's rowdy for a near standard car. Yeah, I don't I don't think he's done much work to it. It gets on alright. That yeah. was nearly the speed limit and nobody behind us anymore that's weird um guys look, we're gonna head back to the shop we're gonna show you how the kit has changed but in reality driving them not a lot has changed since that last car that you would have seen the gearbox just works it works for towing it works for trying to drive quickly if you're in traffic it cruises on the highway really well we just we're just doing things a bit different to how we originally thought all right i think head back to the shop this thing makes the right noises show them what we've been doing i forgot how to do this it's been a while yeah, I do want to apologize for the lack of videos. Prioritizing getting these kits done and done properly has definitely been all of our goal for the last two months. Unfortunately, when we put our minds to something, it gets a bit out of control, which is what we're going to show you guys now because uh, this, is, this is a pretty good kit. We're pretty happy with where we've ended up and there's no corners cut. Price is not what we were trying to do here. We're not trying to do it a cheap way. We're trying to do it the best possible way. And uh, just so everybody knows, we have started fitting the retail kits. We did finish the PVS truck last week or the week before last, and we do have the first two retail customers here from the last pre-order. We have a lovely vehicle there. I might do another video on these, the first two as they come out, because the second car is actually a six by six. It's kind of cool. We'll show you guys probably next week. Anyway, let's show them what's happened with the kits. Cause I know that's what people are interested in. All I've done really for the last two months is talk to you guys who want to order a kit, back order a kit, get a kit before the end of the financial year, uh, order 20 kits to send overseas. It's been really crazy, but because of the demand is why we've gone a little bit further with what we're actually providing, just to make it easier to do. So, gentlemen. Oh, these, you're not making it anymore. No, I gave up. <laughs> That's not true. That's not true. I didn't give up. We outsourced it to make it faster to someone that's got a bigger machine shop and more machine capabilities. And a bit more experience. A bit, yeah, yeah quite so a bit more experience. Years yeah. 40 weeks. Yeah, um, minutes. And you got, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be, please don't take it I think this is a, a really nice finished product. What? Yours was good. <laughs> Yours was good. But I mean, just look at it. 
Look at the finish on it. That's not the sort of well, finish not, you normally get on a bell no, housing adapter. It's not adapter. that good. It's, there's, there's a fingerprint on it there. <laughs> and... Uh, look, they're very, very yeah, they are nice. Very, good. very nice. And this wasn't straightforward either. This shop didn't just take our drawing and then print them out. They've checked what we've done. They've redesigned a few little parts of the tool paths, which is why it's got such a nice finish on it. A few little angles have changed. Uh, and we're now at the point with this company where they're ready to do... I'm going to get this wrong. Three a day? Four a day? Four a day. Four a day. Hopefully. Which is monumental. That's something that would take you a week or longer. More. Yeah. It needs to be more than a week. Yeah. So this is another thing that we really wanted to be careful with and make sure that we can get them made well and made in high volume and, and, and just the, be a good product. The quality. Get in the shop that could do the quality and could do the work that we want to deliver mm. was very difficult. But we found a really great shop with really great guys. So we've got the bell housings under control, or the bell housing adapter, I should say. That's a bit of the bolt kit. That's not the whole bolt kit, but yeah, you get bolt kits with these kits. The TCU. Dan? Yes. What is your thought on this TCU after experimenting with another TCU a couple of years ago? And we must have done 20 or 30 of these now. I can't keep up. Yeah. Look, uh, the last TCU that I used, I tried one. No, wrong. I tried two and said I'm never touching one again because they are very time consuming, very painful and everything changes. With exactly. this... Can you remember what you said to me when I was trying to convince you to put one in your drift car? Yeah, I said, if you ruin my car, I'll never speak to you again. <laughs> <laughs> the reason I'm talking about this, when we started this 79 series kit, the controller was the key. The controller was key to making it drive like it come from the factory with the eight speed gearbox. And I think it does. The, the guys that have driven all the test cars, they love them. You, and you, seriously, you get in it and it drives like it come with that transmission from the factory. Everyone has the same reaction when they get in it. The skeptical people that I've spoken to and I've taken for a test drive in a car, they all do this. <laughs> well, actually, uh, all Brock, of them. Brock had it yesterday. The thing is, this isn't just a normal automatic that we're putting in. It's the ZF8. You buy a, the, the newest, greatest, most expensive Aston Martin you can buy has the ZF8. So it's Bentley. the same. The Bent, what was it? Bentley? Bentley. Rolls-Royce. Bet, Rolls-Royce, definitely. But I was pretty excited when I saw it in the V12 Aston Super Legera. Like, you can make these things drive really nice or you can make them feel like a race car. And now PBS has a ridiculous race car that's four meters off the ground. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you can have some fun in it. Okay, so bell housing adapter. Brock, what's this? The technical term? Converter spigot. I always call it the dick. It's the converter dick. Uh, but basically this is what, what lines everything up. So this goes into the back of the crankshaft and then this and then pokes out past the flywheel, like this, Yep. somewhat. And through this, through the converter adapter, it's a nice tight fit, so I won't put that in there now. And then the converter has a protrusion on the back of it that locates in there. Hold on, I'll grab that. Locates that to keep the converter perfectly aligned with the axis of rotation of the crankshaft. Okay, so the, I don't know, they're dowels. You these need are, them. These are genuine BMW dowels. From an M3. From an M3, sourced from Germany, just <laughs> for your kits, guys. They go um, in here, like this, very, very tight fit. And they locate the gearbox against the bell housing adapter, which also has dowels into the engine, so everything is perfectly concentric. I assume the dowels on the other side of the Toyota ones. They are, and they're in the engine. They stay in the engine. Awesome. Cool. What is this Frisbee looking thing? This is the Frisbee or the converter adapter. So this takes a space between the um, flywheel and the converter. Okay, so that's a that's quite an important piece. Um, yeah, well, also, they wouldn't bolt together without that. So you're still going to make these? I'll still make these here for the time being. Yeah, okay, and that's why you put all the pretty patterns in it. Yeah, I, know, I like the pretty patterns. Nice, Dan. Uh, this is a oil cooler. So this is the one that we've been using in all the cars. Yeah. All the well, actually we've been using it in a few drift cars. Yeah. yeah. Everything. Look, it's potentially a bit overkill especially for um the land cruiser stuff we might on a couple of the test cars we might swap them out for a shorter version which will be easier to mount especially some of these cars have so much stuff going on in the front with winches and lights and cables and everything running there um, especially got front mount intercoolers as well um, so we're going to try smaller ones to see if they're up to the task but so far we haven't really had any overheating issues with these well we're not even close are we we've had underheating issues with yeah. max car yes. yep and max and car being the most powerful one and that's, that's what this is for well i have these now these are from improved racing out of the us and they are uh oil thermostats 
80, 80 degrees? 165 Fahrenheit. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what that is in bananas, but... I've, I've noticed that once when I drive the cars with these in them, the trans sits around that 70 to 80 degrees. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't really go under 70, which is what we want. We want it yeah. up in, in that operating temperature. I'm saying that in the cars that don't have these, they're sitting at 57, 60. My yeah, they're car, too cold. My car doesn't have one. And even after being at the racetrack and using it, it doesn't get above like 70 degrees. So this was definitely a necessary thing to put into these cars. And this one, that was the first eight-speed part you ever made. Yeah, I think it was. We did that back in August. Uh, yeah. And we've sold oh, 40 or 50 of these now. Uh, that goes inside the transmission. It's part of us prepping the gearbox for the new controller. But it is a billet piece that goes in there. These are straight off the plasma. As you can see, they're still raw steel. We haven't coated these ones. These yet. are the transmission mount. So this goes between the transfer case adapter and the rubber isolator and your factory gearbox cross member. So no cutting, no welding. None of that. Bolt in. All bolt in. Bolt in. This is now a true, you can do it at home if you want to. That right there is a bracket for that. That's, yep. Yep. That's, that's what we used to mount that. Straight off the plasma. Not coated yet or anything, but good for display. Um, this is a TCU, so you can see it out of the box. Yes. Yeah, This we've been mounting these up above the glove boxes in the 79 series. It sits out of the way. I think that's the safest place to put them. They're not in the way, and you can get to the USB port if you want to make any changes later on down the track. What's that, Dan? That's an expensive piece. This is the transfer case adapter. So this is what goes on the back of the gearbox and adapts the 79 series transfer case to the, um, yeah, to the transmission. And Brock called it a rubber isolator, which I thought was a very engineering term. Uh, yeah, it, that's a gearbox mount. It is a gearbox mount. It's an off the shelf mount. Uh, obviously we'll let everybody know where it is if they ever need to replace it in two, three, four, five years time. Yep. But our local Bursons had 22 on the shelf. So it's fairly common, easy to it's, get. Probably the most common one. It's a Turbo 400. Are you, you weren't supposed to tell them. It's a Turbo 400 gearbox mount. <laughs> 20 something dollars from Bursons. We yeah. did that so that when they do wear out, like everything, you can go and get one and you don't have to ring us or you don't have to come it's to where it's fitted out. Yeah. Something that we wanted to do different to other, and this is not, this isn't Land Cruiser gearbox conversions, but there are people that will make uh, engine swaps, gearbox conversions for all cars, and then they lock you into buying their parts. They make something specific that will wear out, so you have to go back. We want it to be easy. So if you're in the middle of Australia in 10 years time, you can get a part that may wear out easily, which is why we've used that mount. Uh, these are some of the trans cooler, that non. Bracket these are the brackets. brackets. These are the brackets that we based off a fairly standard vehicle, and so far they've been really, they've been pretty good on every vehicle we've been putting them on. Apart from apart from one or two, yeah. this white thing. Yeah. So this one obviously has no airflow through the front, so we didn't want to put the um, well, the cooler behind here. To be fair, I, I honestly don't think that would be a problem. This is too efficient, but there's no room. There's no, there's it's also got no a gigantic winch there, and that so, that custom bar just crams everything in. Even on even on all the ones that have had lights, winches, this, that, everything else in there, we still put those behind them, like we did on Max. Max is have even on an angle jam behind his winch, and it still works perfectly. Mm -hmm. Too good. So yeah, these are the most universal ones we can mount that work on everything so far. And we will probably refine this as we go more and we do more and we can make alterations that'll make it easier to fit on more yes. different setups. Also, it's it's don't overthink the oil cooler. A lot of people that have called me are really worried about these transmissions getting hot. And I understand why that concern is there. It's because of other options that are out on the market. These just don't get hot. The, our problem has been getting them warm enough to drive. Right, that's the nice pretty billet bench over here. The flywheel, which is part of a kit. Yeah, so this is a custom made flywheel. These aren't an off the shelf product. These are made specifically for our conversion. So you will have to buy that from us, but it will never wear out. It's not a wear item though, because it doesn't get used as a as a flywheel, as a clutch flywheel per se. It's a, just a flywheel. And we've gone with a flywheel instead of a flex plate purely because it's quite hard to get the weight of flex plates from Toyota. And again, we don't want people to be stuck in two or three years time where they can't change something. This this will always be available. It is a modified, it's, it, well, it was a manual flywheel. Yes, it was. If they do start with a manual flywheel, they're modified by us to do this conversion. 
and we have plenty of those on the shelf. Here we have one of the gearboxes. Uh, it has got the trans cooler already bolted on. This is actually going in one of the first two cars. It must be the other car because this gearbox is mounted. Yeah, it's it? in the other one, I think. Um, yeah, so this is how it sits. We do run a... Hey, what's this stuff? Heat sleeve. I've Braden never had... Sleeve. It's heat sleeve. I've never had this on any of my cars. It's very... It looks expensive. It is expensive. Okay, all right. But it's very good. <laughs> it's very good at keeping heat away from damaging your hoses. And we use PTFE hose, so the Teflon, uh, Teflon brand hose. The hose is overkill. It, it is. It definitely is. We've got stainless steel braid. It's rated to thousands of PSI. But again, we don't want this leaking in two or three years' time when you're in the middle of the outback. Yeah. It so is. This, this hose was actually originally designed for pulsing hydraulic systems. So it's the most demanding systems, but for longevity, there's not going to be anything better. No. In fact, the reason it's got the sleeve on it is we don't want the hose wearing through anything else. The hose it won't wear, but it might wear a hole in the yeah, bell housing. As the stainless braid rubs on things, it cuts through things. But the heat sleeving and that hose together are uh, the best option available. Mm. And that is the gearbox package. Uh, we are supplying a new genuine oil pan with all the kits at this point in time. It also comes with a billet breather adapter. On the cars, I would open that bonnet, but none of us can reach it anyway. Um, we run these uh, breathers up into the engine bay so the gearbox can breathe. You can still take this underwater. That all works absolutely fine. Uh, it's quite a small gearbox, isn't it? Mm. This is how... It wasn't easy to keep the... I can't show these guys because we haven't got them here. But we use the factory tail shaft. In the front shaft, we do use a small spacer, but the factory rear tail shaft, we have maintained it. Even though we've got these big billet adapters at each end of the box, it all still fits in. And man, that is one weapon of a box. This, this is expensive. This is definitely necessary to keep those tail shaft lengths that you just spoke about. Yeah. To keep everything within the operating range of those shafts without having to go and modify your shaft, we had to do this. Uh, okay. The good news is we have heaps of these in stock. <laughs> we do. Do you want to show? Actually, we can probably show them. I'll get you to slide it in. So this is also On the... camera? No, oh. not this. Not oh, oh, this. Oh, okay. Uh, this is the... What's the official name? Spud shaft. But if you put it in, that is what joins the factory ZF output. That is the big 43 spline version into the input on the transfer case. She slides on. It's tight though. That is a it's very, a very tight. Precision. It's meant to be tight. It's a precision machine component. But, so these are modified to, to accept this. And actually, you can see it locates down inside here when it does. Very pre precision machine. <laughs> oh, it makes a difference. I never knew that. Um, well, actually, we can probably show them. So, an unmodified one of these, you're limited to about You can only about get this into about there. there. Yeah. So to do that, we couldn't have this at this dimension. It had to be another, I think 13 it's 13 mil longer, mm -hmm. which was outside the operating range of the factory shafts when everything moves back that far. And this front flange, this part of it here, only exists to help locate the transfer case onto the back of the factory gearbox as you're lifting it up in there. It, does, it doesn't really do anything. There's we also just... an oil seal here. So we couldn't just machine the front off it. So we had to pocket it out a little bit to accept this into here. There's still heaps of spline engagement. Yep. And There's the same amount of spline engagement. I there think. is, yeah. But this is this is going to be an optional part. So not everybody is going to need this because obviously if you're getting the kit done here, we can do this machining in house. That's right. But if you want to send the kit out and you want it to be a bolt-in thing with no need to go to a machine shop, we can supply that gear and that just gets put in. But we'll it, supply the gear with bearing new bearing genuine bearing. bearings and seals. So you don't even need a press. You don't need a press. You can just pull or you or your mechanic or whoever's doing it. Pull your transfer apart, slip the old one out, put this one in, bolt it into the car. Wicked. Nice and easy. Easy. Okay, now this isn't part of the kit, but we've got it here so we don't forget. There is a, it's not billet, it's a steel bracket. Steel bracket that, we don't have any here because they're all off a of powder coat at the moment, but it basically mounts this, your low range shifter, back into the factory position, on but on the eight speed gearbox. And that was really easy to work out in that factory position, wasn't it? So easy. You did it first yeah, time straight yeah. away. It didn't take me at least... 15 hours to <laughs> measure everything and double check everything and test everything in cars. And then make it strong enough. Because let's be real, the transfer cases on these 79s is not the greatest thing when you're going from low range to high range. The the final brackets, they're just at the powder coaters, but they are thick steel. They bolt onto the box. We do make a small modification to the box, but we'll show you guys the bike kit how to do that just in case you need another box in four or five years time. Uh, a few people have been concerned about supply of these boxes. They are from the most popular 
it's got to be the most popular model BMW four-wheel drive ever, which is the most popular BMW. Yeah. yeah. So it's the most common gearbox out of a BMW in Australia. Um, they've been using them for about 10 years. And yeah, they're relatively easy to get at the records at the moment. However, we will never run out of them. We'll make sure we've always got them in stock, ready to go if anybody wants anything. While we're talking about that, this box is an unmodified used box. A couple of the, it wasn't a couple, four of the first 10 people opted for either a reconditioned version or a upgrade. The upgrade and the reconditioned boxes do get vapor blasted, don't they? They do. So it looks like a brand spanking new box and essentially fresh. Essentially, all of the internals are new when you go for the Rico option. Uh, one thing that is a bit of an issue with the Rico ones, it does take quite a long time. In fact, it's been nearly two months since we ordered them, isn't it? Yeah. I'd yeah. say it'll be seven weeks. So if you do want the Rico or the upgrade box, just keep in mind that is a bit of a delay that's out of our control. It just takes time to do things properly. Uh, here we have some of the hoses. We just had these laying on the floor. Um, on the hoses, you mentioned before about the breather. We actually tie this breather into the transfer case breather as well. So from factory, the transfer case breather ties into the gearbox breather and they breathe into the factory bell housing. So if you do go swimming in your ute and you fill the bell housing up, you can get water into your gearbox. We tie them both together, then run it up into the engine bay, just uh -huh. near the airbox. So, so what you're saying is the 79 series isn't very good off-road? They aren't very good submarines. <laughs> I'm trying to pick on some people here. But we have made it as bulletproof as possible. And if you wanted to, you could potentially plumb it into your airbox so your all your breathing points would come through your snorkel so you could have it completely underwater oh, that's a good idea. i think that's something we need to test very soon <laughs> if you do take your eight speed underwater we'd like to see the video uh okay billet shifter plates now this was it's basically a trim panel to make the oem style shifter that we're using look okay in a console so it goes on here like this and this whole assembly gets mounted into here and this just sits here with the shifter coming out the middle. Uh, now, obviously that one is a raw billet version. We are trying to get a coating on these that will actually last. We're not there yet, but we think we've got a solution uh, so that you can have either a bare aluminium one or a black one, but we were worried about people with keys or whatever. We just don't want them to look scratched. So if we're gonna coat the metal, it's gotta be strong and it's gotta last, um, but that will be an option to have that black if you prefer. And keep in mind, ooh, this piece is what mounts the shifter into a console. So part of what we're supplying in the base kit is that with the OEM shifter, that if you want to modify a console, if you want to do the console yourself, you can. However, we will have the console option so that you can order everything from us. And we don't want to get into designing interiors. Our focus has been on the gearbox conversion, making sure that that works as good as it possibly can, make sure it's going to last as good as it possibly can. Uh, we don't want to get into the interior design stuff. And it's because everyone, it's such a personal thing. What what we think or what I think might be the best is probably different to what Brock thinks. Definitely best different to yeah, what definitely. I think. <laughs> definitely different. <laughs> that was a dig. All right, and here we have one of the consoles. Uh, with these consoles, Something that we organize with Pittman is just to make sure that it is a solid console. So when it's mounted in, the shifter does not flex. Everything is rock solid, and it is. Uh, when you move these into drive, sports mode, whatever, when you're being a bit of an idiot with them, nothing moves. Just keep that in mind. Some of the consoles on the market, this section is not very strong, and you will get a little bit of flex. So that's what you need to be aware of. You also need to be aware that you need a thick section up the top for this to mount to. Okay, so that's our kit. Most of it. Nearly. Most of it. And now that we've just done that video, it seems, why have we taken so long? Well, it's not just been getting the kit ready that's been a big thing. We've been trying to get our workshop ready to install these kits. We have the first two retail customers here last week, or this week really, and we've actually set up the entire shop next door. So we've got four new hoists. We have four new staff that have started with us in the last couple of weeks, and we are ready to, to kick some goals, I think. Yeah. There's also been a lot of the little bits and pieces for these kits that we have that we've been sorting out. Your life has not been pleasurable the last few months. I like my life. But the, the thing, <laughs> and, and it, it's it's making this stuff as good as it can be. This it's making it easy. So if easy we to, send it to someone, we want it to be installable. Not uh, I need to make this bracket. I need to mount this oil cooler. It needs to be. I can bolt this in here with minimal fuss. Yeah. And that's that's a tricky thing to build because obviously when we put stuff together here, if we need a bracket, there's we go to Brock and there's a man that makes the bracket. Um, if you're at home, 
and you need a bracket, you've got to go all the way to Brock's house. <laughs> Don't come to my house, please. <laughs> yeah, so we've really gone over the top. This is, when we did that first video back in December last year, we thought we were going to do all the kits here. We thought we were going to machine the parts, do the install, and, and do all the finishing touches here, which we can do quickly when it's a one-off type of thing that, that we've got Brock to do the one-off bits. Sometimes I need to sleep, though. So <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, transferring to everything, going outsourced, getting it laser cut, and being able to be done in large volumes has been a lot of the challenge over the last couple of months. And again, making sure that it's done to the quality that we want, the way we want to do it. There are other bits and pieces that are part of the kit. I was just looking at this. This part actually gets some noise insulation underside it. Oh, we didn't even talk about it. Uh, this blocks off where your manual gear stick used to come actually, through. That's a gear stick delete kit, mate. <laughs> gear stick delete kit. Um, so there's a slot here, so the wiring, which it comes as a full loom, which is plug and play, which Andrew didn't get out for anyone to yeah, see. Yeah, I forgot about that, but I have got a video of the wiring loom, which again, that got more complicated. Yep, uh, it did. It we got more plug and play as well, though. Mm. Yeah, so we found that the there was issues running with the factory Toyota um, cruise control system. So with that, we had to make some changes with how the controller read the signals while it was on cruise, which made it a little bit more complex. I'm gonna also made it a little bit more plug and play. I'm just gonna tell him what happened with the cruise because it was my fault. So on the test car, Max car, we hooked up his cruise, we tested it on the highway and it worked. And we tested it for a few seconds, cruise is working, we're good. One of our guys then drove that car down to his Tasmania trip. Now he was driving from Queensland to Tasmania on the highway and he said cruise was fine unless it come to a hill and wanted to change gear. Now, in Max car, we had, this was early days, like mm. we didn't know a lot about the 1VD ECU at the time, but we knew that there was a first gear torque limiter. So we were trying to activate that during gear changes. And we, well, I made the assumption that Max car was turning cruise control off because the first gear torque limiter was confusing it. It's doing 110 kilometers an hour and it thinks it's in first gear. Yeah, turn the cruise off. Um, turns out that the issue with the cruise is it's got some sort of algorithm for clutch slip. With our TCU, this thing is so clever with how it works. When cruise control is on, it locks the converter. Everything was solid engine to diff. But as soon as it changes gear, the, the, the factory ECU just detects slip and turns the cruise off thinking it's damaging a manual clutch. Yeah, I, uh, I wasn't expecting that. That's quite a clever thing for Toyota to have done with its cruise control. Um, but to get around it, on the vehicles with factory cruise control, we just fit an aftermarket cruise control system and it gets rid of that clutch safety system. The system we've got all integrates like factory though. Oh. It's a factory stalk and everything, so yes. you don't even notice there's a difference. It, yeah, it operates basically the same. In fact, I think it activates at a slightly slower speed than the factory cruise. Um, but I drove a car to the Sunshine Coast and back with the cruise control system. It was sweet. And the wiring harness, I will. I, I got a video of it, the one that went into one of these cars. Uh, it's it's basically it looks like a race car wiring harness. Yep. It is all plug and play. Uh, yeah, everything's plug and play, isn't it? Yeah. I yep. think maybe one wire you've actually got to wire in, but yeah, we've used uh, we've basically used male and female Toyota plugs where we're intercepting a signal for something, and they're all watertight with the O rings, and it's 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 a proper wiring harness braided. It looks really nice, and it makes installing the electric side. Very easy. There is one thing we haven't done yet. What? The brake pedals. Yes. Now we don't think it's a big issue, but it's something we want to get sorted because a few people have asked me about that. Um, we will have a solution for the brake pedals in the next month and it will be an option to add it to the kit if you want an automatic style brake pedal. But you don't need it. You don't, I don't notice it, but the footwells are pretty small on these things anyway. And you only use your right foot for those things anyway. Yeah. But look, if people want it, we'll make it. That's it. All right, guys. Now, the big thing that everybody's asking me is when can they buy a kit? If it's like cash to me, you can do it right now. <laughs> that doesn't help, bro. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, we didn't want to take anybody's payments until we were in a, in a position to actually deliver the kits. Getting the workshop set up has taken longer than we thought it would. Getting the staff trained up has taken longer than we thought it would. Getting all of these little things outsourced has taken longer than it thought than we thought it would, but we're there now. So I've had a lot of people, particularly in the last week, hit me up about buying a kit this financial year. So we are going to do a pre-order in this financial year. Um, there'll be details on the website. Make sure you're on the mailing list. I will email people out a couple of days before, but it will be a limited number. Um, I guess one thing I want to ask is how long are you happy to wait for a kit? Two months, three months? Put the comment below and then we'll work out how we're going to do it. Obviously, the people that pay first 
we'll get the kits first. It's first paid, first delivered. That's how we're going to do it. Anything else? No. Nope. Sorry it's taking so long, but we want to do it right. We're getting there. This is sick. That is sick. I can't believe it just works as well. Daniel, he's all right. No, not Daniel. <laughs> the, the PBS thing. See, this thing with the huge 40-inch tires, I thought it was going to be a hell of a lot more programming to make it all work, but it took, really took, took minutes to sort out. The, yeah. This thing just adapts to loads and whatever you do with it, whatever chassis you put it in, going uphill, downhill, low range, whatever. This is dialed. The electrics are dialed, which is the big thing. Yeah. Transbreak in the driveway? You can transbreak it. Although I don't know if his uh, portal axles are yeah, like that. Gonna, we're not going to enable transbreak on Land Cruiser customers. Sorry, guys. <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you all for watching. Sorry it's been such a lame videos, but I'll do one next week on the other two cars. The 6x6 is cool. Actually, this thing's cool. That's a... That's got more accessories yeah. than anything else that's come through, I think. It's a real, that's a, yeah. That's a sweet thing. I'm keen to see what different levels of Land Cruiser we get through the shop over the next couple of years. So far, we've just got heavy ones. So yeah. we'll see how <laughs> they're just all heavy. <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you all. We'll catch you on the next one.